Hello and welcome to the Long Island Weather Update tonight. It's 10 o'clock on August 2nd, 2024, and uh, unfortunately the uh, thunderstorms that uh, look, looked, looked nice on the radar fell apart by the time they got here. And uh, you can see, looking at the current radar, that we do have a few thunderstorms. Looks like we do have a line that is now hitting New Jersey again. Uh, so uh, let's just go back a little bit and look at the radar from before uh, and show you what happened earlier. Uh, this evening so I was watching this line form around this is six o'clock here nice little line here formed over Jersey 610 uh, hit the city and it was still holding together even at seven o'clock and then right after seven o'clock started falling apart a little bit one piece went over northern Queens and then it just kind of became a rainy mess and kind of ruined my evening actually because uh, the rain just just I this is what I mean by rainy mess the storm just spreads out and it just takes forever to stop raining, and that's exactly what happened. And it didn't really stop raining until about 8.30 this evening here in Nassau County. So, um, yeah, that's that's what we were dealing with today um, with uh, this uh, thunderstorms. Unfortunately, a disappointment, I know, a very big disappointment. Uh, but hopefully maybe we'll have better luck tomorrow. So uh, before I go on, let's look at our climate update for the month of July. Uh, so let's do our um, monthly weather summary for the month of July. And for July, uh, the average maximum at Islip was 83.8. The normal is supposed to be 82.8. So one degree above normal on the high. All right. Uh, the average minimum of 70 uh, was above normal quite a bit more. The low is supposed to be 67.3. So that was 2.7 degrees above normal. That gives us a mean of 76.9, which is almost 2 degrees above the normal of 75. So 77 uh, for a mean instead of 75. Uh, and we had, as far as rainfall goes, only 2.55 inches of rain. The normal is supposed to be 3.26, so that's 0.71 degrees below normal. Um, so that's what ice slip was. And we'll go ahead now and look at Central Park, where it was quite a bit hotter. So uh, this is what I mean. The minute you head inland and away from the shore, I slip was sort of toward the shore where they are. Um, I mean, it's Ronkonkoma, but they get a better breeze than, say, we do here in central Nassau. Um, but anyway, getting to Central Park, average maximum was 87.2. The normal is 84.9. So they were 2.3 degrees above normal on the, ma on the high. Average minimum 72.1. 70.1 is the normal, so 2 degrees above normal there, and the mean is 2.1 degrees above normal. 79.6 was the mean for Central Park. Uh, and for as precipitation goes, rainfall 4.20, just a little bit below the normal of 4.60. Uh, so now we'll go and look at Newark, New Jersey, of course, the hot spot. And no surprise, they have the biggest anomaly in the temperature. So 89.7 for the average maximum, almost an average of 90 degrees for the month of July at in New Jersey, which is this is very hot there. Normal is 86.9. That's 2.8 degrees above normal. For the high, average minimum is 72.8. Uh, normal is supposed to be 69.4, 3.4 degrees above normal. That gives us an average of 81.3. Uh, which is 3.1 degrees above the normal of 78.2. And I just want to look at the splits between JFK and the Guadalajara. So JFK managed to be uh, 1.7 degrees above normal for the month of July. And LaGuardia, on the other hand, managed to be um, at LaGuardia. Like average, LaGuardia actually only managed to be 0.5 degrees above normal. For the month, interesting that the Guadu is a little not quite as hot as since the hot spot shifted more to Newark. The Guadu sort of sits by the water, so that I think does have an effect. Uh, so anyway, let's go and look at our current conditions outside, and then we'll come back to uh, today's uh, today's uh, climate statistics. And you'll see this is not good. We have a lot of heat advisories and red flag warnings again in the West. That is not a good situation at all. Uh, we're going to see more of these wildfires. Uh, it's both the wet northwest and the southwest seeing uh, these excessive heat advisories. And, yep, red flag warnings until 
this evening for dry thunderstorms. That's not a good thing at all. So um, let's go take a look at what our current temperatures are outside. And it is still a very muggy night out there. 79 degrees at Farmingdale, 2.75. Light rain still being reported as of 10 p.m. So it kind of shows you, it kind of shows you how slow this is moving. Look at Islip, 79 with a dew point of 79. That dew point is almost 80 degree dew point at Islip. That is incredible. The humidity today is just off the charts. It's just disgusting. Dew point 75. So the rain just made it worse. I mean, it was better before the rain. Same thing happened the other night with this as well. Um, so you can see here that we have temperatures generally. And that look, look, let's look at New Jersey. Look at Miller Air Park. Dew point of 77 degrees. And they hit 97 today. Let's just see how bad it was. You know, Tom's River today. You can see those dew points in the mid-70s. So that with dew temperatures in the mid-90s, making it feel like it's over 100 degrees. That's unbelievable. So we'll, uh, I guess we'll go and look at the highs on the screen now. And you'll see, uh, yep, Islip did not make it to 90. They got to 88, but Farmingdale made it to 90. <laughs> no surprise, my area got up to 93, no problem. If you were on the South Shore, you avoided that with upper 80s. Um, and uh, also uh, close to 90. Let's see, I, West Hampton got up to 88. And the, the uh, North Fork got close to 90, and the South Fork 85. South Fork, always cooler than the North Fork, closer to the ocean, of course. Pretty hot also in the Hudson Valley, low 90s there. Mid-90s in northern New Jersey, 92 at Central Park. And even JFK got up to 91 today. And, of course, the real heat as we go south of the Raritan in New Jersey. Oh, boy, upper 90s there. The upper 90s, very, very hot over here in this area here. You can see that. A lot of heat. Um, and... You know, not much of a 95 in downtown Tom's River. You know, only right, only relief was right at the shore where it only got up to 80 degrees. So if you're right on the shore, you get some kind of relief. But other than that, you're dying. And the lows obviously barely made it below the mid-70s. No surprise. Seeing a lot of these warm nights here. Um, and you can see that heat advisory still in effect for our area along with air quality alert and all the other good stuff. Uh, now we will look at precipitation and see how much rain fell. Um from the thunderstorms today and um we didn't get that much rain from it it did come down but not for very long it's mainly light light rain that was lingering it's only a tenth of an inch not really a big rainfall man it looks like got they got a little more out around hicksville 0.31 nothing for the east and and then in the city it looks like uh close to a half an inch um and then you know some higher amounts though as we get into new jersey and newark our Harrison reported 1.10 inches, 1.20 East Branch, and Newark Airport got 0.74. So the storms definitely worse over there, worse over Staten Island as well, um, and also Northern Jersey as well. It looks like they got a decent amount of rain out of it too. Franklin Lakes, well over an inch of rain, starting off the August on a wet note for them. Uh, as far as Ocean County, barely anything. Uh, inland, though, uh, this is just kind of shows you how the storms fell apart. Inland, you can see north of New e Egypt, 0.79, but then as you get to the coast, there's nothing. Um, and we still have this flash flood warning in effect, I guess, for south of Philadelphia, I guess, because they've seen over an inch of rain already. So um, that's that's what we have going on right now as far as the rainfall goes. Uh, so let's go look at our climate statistics for today, our daily climate report. We'll first start off with Islip which got up to 88 degrees, and that's 5 degrees above normal. It's low as 75, 7 degrees above normal, and that puts us 7 degrees above normal for the day. At Islip Central Park, got up to 92, and a low of 80. Look, at it only dropped down to 80 in the city. That's about on par with my alley. Uh, and uh, that is, they were 9 degrees above normal for the day. Uh, so that is what we have out there, JFK. Uh, JFK also got up to 91. So, yeah. So, in Newark, of course, the hottest spot. 96 over there. Full 10 degrees above normal for them. So, let's look at the... Uh, let's go back to our weather and hazards map here. And uh, go back to... Where is it? Where did I do with it? Here it is. All right. So we're going to go and just take a look at the country as a whole and show you what's going on. So, 
You notice tropical advisories now. It looks like we've got some tropical storm watches in effect for Florida. So we've got to talk about the tropics. We've got heat advisories on the Gulf. And again, more heat in the southwest again. No surprise there. And yeah, heat and red flag warnings in effect for this area. And look at some of these strong winds. This isn't the last thing you want to see. 85 degrees, 2.29. West-southwest wind gusting to 40. Uh, this is going to be bad. We're going to see explosive fire growth with these because there's still fires burning in this area. And that's not going to be good. And let's see what we got in Alberta. Luckily, Alberta, it's staying cooler up there. But the west, uh, definitely no relief. And look at this. It is 108 in Lewiston right now. They hit 111 today. Oh, my God. And look at the humidity. Only 13%. So that's that's crazy. That's some crazy. That's got to be like near a record or out of record. 111 in Lewiston. You wouldn't think that you go to the Pacific Northwest and you deal with temperatures like this. Um, in Seattle, it's a little cooler. But the minute you head inland, boy, you're above 100 degrees. That's insane right there. That's insane. I wish we could filter out all the records here, the record highs, because I'm sure some of those might be records. So let's go look at some of the highs for this area. You can see well into the hundreds here so there's a lot of heat here and that's that's, that's not a good thing at all with all these wildfires burning and it's going to get a lot worse now after this we're going to have to look at the satellite as well with this because this is not this is not a good situation at all uh, so let's look at the radar here across the country we'll show you what's going on and you'll see that we have some scattered showers and thunderstorms to Tennessee not a whole lot of activity, though, and nothing out west, of course. Bone dry. Actually, no, we do have some stuff in the southwest. But these could be high-based thunderstorms, though, and they could actually cause more wildfires. But it looks like we do have a line of severe thunderstorms east of Denver right now. That looks like a line of severe thunderstorms. And that probably explains that severe thunderstorm warning that is east of Denver right there. Uh, so let's go look at the satellites. Oh, yeah, we got to talk about the tropics too so let's go to that next tropical depression four all right and uh, this is uh this is what we're gonna have to watch now we already have a map for this thing and uh this is what we have uh as of and we're gonna have to keep now because of this probably gonna have to keep doing weather updates so through the weekend because of this we're gonna have to watch this so let's go look at that map show you what we have so they have it forecasting to become a tropical storm and make a landfall on the west coast, uh, upper west coast of Florida. They'll go across Florida and then wind up in the Carolinas. All right. Uh, and this, uh, right now, they just have it as a tropical storm. But we're going to have to look at some of the models and talk about that as well. So let's look at uh, our uh, satellite image. All right. We're going to actually go to, actually, let's go to tropical tidbits and go to current storms. And uh, we can look at that. Uh, so here, so we can take a look at four right now. And you can see. It looks pretty disorganized, but it's going to get itself together once it gets out over the Gulf right now. So right now, it doesn't look like anything crazy. We look at the spaghetti models. You can see that track. You can see how they came up with that track. But then you notice the remnants of it get close to our area. So this may be something we're going to have to watch as well. Uh, if we look at this intensity guidance, you'll see some. Actually, some models do bring it up to a Category 1 hurricane as well. So don't forget, we have that warmer than normal water. So that's, that's always... That's always something that we're you know, going to have to watch for. So we will keep an eye on that. Let's go back to the uh, satellite image now. We'll go to the CONUS satellite, which I'm afraid to look at at this point uh, with the fires out west because I have a feeling it's going to be bad when we go over there. Uh, so you can see uh, there's our low pressure here. See that low pressure area right there spinning around. You can see some smoke wrapped around it. It was a little bit less smoke today, maybe. I don't know. We're going to go to the smoke model and find out. Um, but you can see behind it, there seems to be some smoke. And there's still plenty of smoke out in the west, smoke everywhere. And there's there's your tropical depression right there at the bottom. Very, very noticeable. And this will become Debbie, right? So that will be our next uh, tropical system that we're going to have to be concerned about. Let's look at the west right now. Um, let's go to the... Uh, Pacific Northwest Satellite View, which, again, I'm kind of afraid to look at. We do have a lot of Cirrus, which is kind of blocking, uh, but I do see a lot of fires going here. Let's... Um, you can see a lot of fires. You can see how they're going to poof up, yep, as we get toward the afternoon. That heat and that wind kick up, that's going to 
these fires that are still burning are going to go out of control very quickly, I think, with that. Um, yeah, that's, that's exactly what we're seeing here. Um, can't really see what's going on in Northern California too well, but we can definitely see the fires in Oregon, Washington, Idaho. Uh, we've got some in Montana. You can see all the smoke as well. Let's look at the um, Northern Canada one. Um, yeah, we can do Canada, Northern U.S., and you can see, you can, you can see this a little. Yeah, it looks like a big fire just blew up in northwestern British Columbia right there. So let's go take a look at that. Uh, we'll go to the southeastern Alaska one for that. So, oh yeah, that's not good. So we have a big fire now in northeastern British Columbia. This is a pretty big wildfire that's happening right now over there. So it never ends with these wildfires and the smoke. And we're going to be dealing with it more for sure. So let's go to the models now, and uh, we'll first look at the Weather Prediction Center. First of all, map, you can see there's your lows, and we got these lows here, and then we're going to have to, then we have a cold front coming, but guess what's going to happen as we get towards Sunday? It's going to stall out. What else is new? More stall front syndrome. That could be a problem for us down the road. So as far as storm threat goes, let's go into the day two convective outlook, and you see the marginal risk for our area for tomorrow. Again, they're putting us in the marginal risk for severe weather. Sunday, le less likely to see severe weather. Um, so let's go look at the models now and we'll talk about the weekend and what we have. So here's your high, here's your disturbance. And um, you'll see here that we have a little bit of a break from the showers and thunderstorms and they'll fire back up again tomorrow night. Um, you can see the ridge um, and you can see our tropical system now developing so here's your ridge here's your approaching front here's your tropical system here and you can see what's going to happen it's going to kind of ride along this stalled front so depending on how far this front gets will kind of depend and you see what happens here because there isn't much of a jet stream it kind of just sits off the carolinas for a little bit and it actually builds quite a bit of strength and then it kind of curves back west again and look at this this would be a very bad situation for us uh, come Friday, August 9th. So uh, this looks like a pretty, again, staying out over the water and then kind of just hugging the coast like this because of that stalled frontal boundary that we have that kind of gives it a path to head up the coast. So if we look at the upper air here, you'll see what happens. So we have a little trough up there, and then what will happen is the trough kind of picks it up, and then we have the ridge offshore. So because of the damn ridge offshore, it's, it doesn't really go out to sea, and it brushes us. And this could give us some tropical storm-type conditions about a week from today. Yeah, well, Friday, August 9th. So uh, hopefully that isn't the big one. But we're going to have to keep an eye on this for sure. And I, I think I'll be talking about it more on... Um, um, we'll talk about it a little bit more at the end of this uh, weather update. But I want to cover this weekend and the issues we have right now. So let's look at the... Um, H triple R, zero Z H triple R, and take a look and see what this has for tomorrow. And you'll see again. Um, look at what happens again tomorrow night. So during the day it's fairly quiet, and then all of a sudden tomorrow night, here we go again with another uh, uh, area of severe thunderstorms, possibly severe thunderstorms, that, or they could just turn out to be rainy messes. Uh, right around eight o'clock tomorrow night. So we're gonna have to watch for this, um, and then. As we get into Sunday, you see another line developed during the day. Again, you got this stalled front that's just sitting over us, and these thunderstorms just keep firing up um, uh, over this line, and that's why we that have that risk for severe weather um, for tomorrow. And even Sunday, it doesn't look great. Uh, if you're looking for any really dry days, I'm sorry, none of the weekend days look dry. Dew points in the, uh, these dew points are still going to be high tomorrow. Uh, you're going to be atrociously high. Uh, we have a southwest wind, so if you're inland, you're going to bake. Uh, if you're by the shore, it will be better. Um, and then you can see here, um, as we end the tomorrow night, you see not much change here. West southwest wind Sunday goes a little more westerly almost a little bit. So, yeah, that ridge just doesn't really want to go anywhere, and that's the problem. Again, we don't have a jet stream to really move things along. Uh, so let's look at our temperatures tonight dropping not much below the mid-70s. And then tomorrow, it's going to be another hot one if you're inland, probably 90 or better. And we'll probably see close to 90 here in central Nassau. I don't think Islip will hit 90. They only hit 88 today. 
So tomorrow it'll probably be more like 85 or 86 over there for those lucky people. Uh, and then uh, mid-70s, uh, lows don't drop much tomorrow night. And then Sunday, because there'll be more cloud cover and more showers, even though we'll have the westerly wind, the temperatures won't be as hot. Uh, but there'll still be showers. It's just going to be a crappy weekend all in all um, uh, with this freaking pattern that we're in. So uh, let's go look at some of the other models that we have to look at here. I'll go to the NAM next to the NAM3, which we have 38 hours of the NAM3 uh, Z in. Uh, we'll look, go ahead and look at that, and you'll see here uh, for tomorrow, NAM. The NAM really underdid today, so here's the NAM for tomorrow night. And honestly, I, I'm leaning more to the HRRR being right. We're just in such a humid air mass, but it doesn't necessarily mean the storms will be severe. Um, best chance of that will be inland, I think, of course. Um, but we will have to watch out for yeah more showers and thunderstorms uh, for tomorrow. So HRRR, we'll go ahead and we'll... Uh, just look at the um, uh, total accumulated precip. So as far as how much rain we could pick up, uh, we need a zero Z run for that. Um, yeah, some areas could see up to two inches of rain as a result of this. So it's going to be kind of a, yeah, I know, kind of a rainy, well, I wouldn't say rainy weekend because it won't be raining all the time, but when it rains, it could pour. And you could see up to two one inches, uh, one to two inches of rain, perhaps, and perhaps more in some isolated areas, all throughout Long Island into um, New Jersey. Now things are better with the drought. Uh, some parts of Long Island still dealing with a little bit, but I think we've really, uh, you know, with all this rain we're getting, I think we won't have to worry too much about that. Uh, with this tropical air, you know, this is what you get, um, and maybe some severe weather. Perhaps today was certainly a disappointment, though, in that, in that, in that. With that regard, let's go to the R gem and look at the skies. Obviously, this does not show the smoke, but um, show you tomorrow. Obviously, also, you know, plenty of clouds around. Maybe some breaks here and there. Um, and then Sunday, also, plenty of clouds around. And if we're going to go into Monday, if we can get this front offshore, maybe we'll get a little more sunshine. All right? But uh, this weekend is going to be lousy. That's all I'm going to say. So if you have plans outside, it's not going to be great. Especially toward later in the afternoon. If you want to get those things in, you've got to get them in earlier. And Sunday's not really looking like a great day either. So Sunday's, we're hoping Sunday would be less active. If again, with this front just hanging around, it's just, it just doesn't seem like that's going to happen. So let's go to the HRRR now. We'll go to the HRRR smoke model. And it says 0Z go out to 40. I don't really seem to have the, let's see if we have the full 0Z here. Now they're going out to 48 hours. Okay, so let's go look at the smoke situation here. And then we're going to get back to the possibility with the tropics here. So here we go for tomorrow. You see, not really a whole lot of smoke. At least we won't be dealing with a lot of smoke tomorrow. Um, you see a lot out west, though, that's for sure. So tomorrow and the weekend, we won't be dealing with smoke. But unfortunately, with all the clouds around, I don't know how, many blue, how much blue sky we're going to see. Boy, do I miss seeing blue sky, don't you? It's such a rarity now. In this, this horrible world that we live in now because of climate change. Uh, but let's go now to the uh, last part of this weather update, which will be uh, let's go and look at some of the scenarios uh, that we could have with this uh, tropical system here. And we're going to look at the GFS first here uh, with this tropical system. So here we go. Uh, and again, you can see next week, yep, more stall front syndrome. And it's that stall front where the storm is just going to ride right up. And you can see that. And that could bring uh, a decent amount of rain for us again. Uh, I think August, we're going to see a wet month. That's the way it's looking right now because look at the total accumulated precip. It's giving us anywhere from two to as much as possibly five, six, maybe even some areas closer to seven inches of rain through next weekend. Uh, this is what the GFS is doing because of that tropical system. Uh, and let's go look now at the wind, which is the other factor that we would have to be concerned about because... This is kind of frightening, actually. So this storm, GFS is this thing being a hurricane. And honestly, I would not be surprised. This looks like a hurricane to me. But with a track like this, it would keep the worst part of it away from us. But it could hit the Cape pretty bad. So, uh, But this could be a, a big, a, again, any shift in the track. Uh, if this thing shifts further to the west, you know, we're going to have to, as I said, this year, 
uh, I would say we have a pretty good likelihood of getting impacted by a hurricane at some point, being that the, the conditions are the way they are. So you can see, um, of course, we'll. this is a week away, and of course, a lot can change. Let's show to the windy.com model. And this is, uses the European model. And we'll see how this handles it. It only goes out to Wednesday, though, but I'm kind of curious as to what it does with the storm. So the European also kind of has it sitting here as well. You can see, and if we go, let's go to the wind gusts here. And that almost looked like a hurricane on the GFS. at really deep. It wouldn't surprise me with all the warm water we have. Uh, so let's look at the um, wind gusts. I always got to change. They change the way this looks. Over. Wind gusts. Uh, yeah, it's close to hurricane strength. That's uh, not good at all. Let's go to Ventu Sky. That'll be the next one we'll look at here. I also want to look at Cape for tomorrow as well. So let's move this over to Cape. Cape. Yeah, this Cape there. Yeah, so yeah, we definitely could, at, could see the possibility for some thunderstorms tomorrow as well. All right, I'm going to go to wind gusts, and we'll move this along, too. Um, I think this uses the GFS, I think. I don't know what model this is using at this point. It looks like it's not the GFS. It might be the Icon. Now, the Icon has it much further to the west and weaker. Um, it just has it. All right, let's see. What, what is this? this is the Icon, I'm guessing. What is? Let's just use the GFS, please. Just to show you the kind of scenario. This thing is a monster. Look at this GFS. Man. I don't want to scare you guys, but this GFS is uh, pretty freaking scary. Look at these wind gusts on the right side of the storm, and look at how close that is to us. So could Debbie be the storm that uh, hurts us on Long Island? Um, it's the stall front. Originally, the GFS was saying this thing was going to be more offshore, but it's coming further west because the stall front syndrome. That is always the death of us, man. The stall front syndrome. So, uh, again, you don't have a jet stream to move things out. This is what happens. So, that's what happens when we're in climate change. We don't have a jet stream. Think about that for a moment. I mean, not in the sense that we used to have, anyway. So, with that, I'll wrap it up with this rather uh, threatening-looking model here. And uh, I hope this doesn't happen. But if it does, uh, it's going to be rough, especially for the Cape uh, and eastern Long Island. But if, if that trends further to the west, we're going to be in a whole world of hurt. That I don't even want to think about. So, because you know I can't live here without power. So, this place is uninhabitable. So, anyway, thank you for watching and good night.